believe it or not, I still make beats in Studio One. This is 6.5. We're going to start with Playbox. All right, here we go. So one of the things I like to do is turn on the pre-count just so I can get a few bars in the beginning so I didn't turn it on this time but it's on now so I'm gonna bring this forward let's hear what that sounds like all right so I'm gonna go in and quantize everything I have a key command to quantize it's the letter Q it may or may not be the same for you but I'm also going here and change the resolution because I'm noticing yeah so that locks that in place bring it closer to the grid some of the things I like to do just open up the arranger because it just makes it easier to arrange my beat so this is the intro and I'm also bounce this in place it's something else I love to do because that means I can use this one instrument to keep generating new sounds if I you know wanted to do that and it keeps down cpu so i can have a bunch of way because it it costs me nothing in terms of cpu to run waves so Usually open this information tab. You can also access that by hitting the I button on your keyboard. I have some drums already preloaded in Impact. Some samples I have on my system. So I'm just find some real quick. see I'm kind of feeling that and I like the way that I did that and I wasn't recording so I'm hit this retro perspective because it was technically recorded in the background and let's just see what happened. So I'm gonna exit this here. Okay, so it was a little bit before time, which is fine. Cause I can always highlight everything and move things forward. So I'll bring it a little bit. I kind of like the humanized feel that I gave it. So we're going to go with that. So 
let's do something different i was going to go for this whole section to be intro but now i'm feeling like just that those two or four bars yeah just the two i'm sorry the four bars i'm trying to say four but two keeps coming out i think because i have everything like that all right so so we're gonna make this verse and let me easily duplicate that just by clicking on these here and in order to make this one bar usually what i do is just drag this to the edge like that and that that's what makes it one bar or one arranger instance Okay, so because I did that, it it I know this part right here, it only duplicated this last section, this last selection, I'm sorry. So I'm going to do this and actually Let's duplicate that. And I'm thinking this is the preverse. I don't even know if that's a term. So I think that's right. I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna hit G to pack it or glue it. Okay, now that sounds a little off. Okay. start from here now and maybe I can quantize this a little bit more but I'm gonna hit shift quantize it brings it a little closer to the grid but not like all the way right so I'm gonna do that there I'm also do that to this section back here shift Q just so it could be a little bit tighter, but still with that humanized flavor. Now, I don't want a gap right there. The other thing you could do is if you feel more comfortable with another view, you just simply change it like this. I usually work from this view, but you can also work from this view this would be more so for working with drums or percussion this is my vibe right here so i can see things a lot better in my opinion i actually don't want the kick to be like want it a little bit lag you know like something like that there 
Ramirez. So that's cool. That's cool for now. But I'm going to go inside of Impact and, and go to my B Bank and kind of mess, mess around with the kick here. Right, so something else I could do is process this differently. I want my kick to be, uh, let's just bring it out as a mono one, and it already did it for me. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go to my, my mix. So I'm gonna label this kick. This is some of the things that I do. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a EQ. And maybe try turning this on. Okay. That works. Well, maybe not too much, so I'll just use this. That's just so I can edit the kick separately. So, another thing you want to do is always save your work. Studio One has a auto save feature, but Sometimes, you know, it's just a precaution thing. So, in the same instrument, I can overwrite this. I think I would rather keep it here. So, I'm going to go to my library. I'm going to first activate the rack view so we can see everything. And then I'm going to just type base i like using the icon base and i like using the melody version of any of these kits so i can program my own stuff and i usually go for muted okay so i need to change this to number two change the first one to one and right now, I don't care if I have in several MIDI lanes of this. I did a video on that. All I care about is accessing the bass right now. So we're just going to get rid of that for the moment. We're going to also loop this section and... So it's a loop we can see at the bottom. Actually, 
I like using the, the ruler as well. All right, so. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. Put that in three, four. Okay, that works. I want to change the tone real quick, so. Uh, maybe, I don't know. That's not too bad. Now, I can commit to this, but most of the times I don't, but for the sake of this video, let's, let's commit to it. Why not? I think it sounds cool. So, I'm going to bounce that in place. And that's going to be its own, and then I can put whatever on that. Actually, I'm going to just cut here because it's, I know it's taking information from before. I should have, <laughs> I should have erased that, but whatever, as long as I get this here. Uh, something I like to use on bass is a guitar rig, so I can either hit the plus sign here and you know you get this text version or you can open up the browser and grab from there in the browser i am allowed to save thumbnail presets or snapshot screenshots if you will of the plugin and that's why we see these different things you know different visual the visual of the actual plugin which is always always nice guitar rig and we know that seven is the latest so we're gonna throw it i can even throw it here anywhere on this arrange deal or i could throw it right here or i could just throw it in the sense or i could just throw it somewhere in here so it, you know whatever you feel comfortable so i just gotta throw it anywhere you can also do uh, event effects which will put it on that specific deal and you can bounce that in place which is a kind of it's kind of a cool feature to be honest with you that's also another way to save cpu and, and it's like it does its own processing saving to that event and then it just freezes the it frees whatever plugins you have it's kind of cool actually so it just depends on how i feel so we're going to do guitar. Actually, let's do bass. And I don't know. Let's go for something. I don't know. Let's bring this down. Oh, that's nice. Huh. It's not too bad. Let's uh, deactivate. Hmm.
Okay, cool. Now, I know I have some bass information in here. I can hear it, so I'm going to go for AEQ once again. Actually, I could always go for an EQ from another section if I put it anywhere and it was on the kick, yeah. So I can always just grab this and throw this on here. And it will take, it is, basically what it's doing is, is copying and pasting whatever that was on whatever track without me pressing any other buttons. I just grabbed it and put it over there. Probably this setting may work. I don't know. Let's see. Probably a little bit more. Yeah. Let me work a little bit more on this bass. I'm gonna actually take this EQ, put it on the bass as well. But this time. Something like that. So cool. This is kind of my workflow. So we got a verse, we got an intro. I can double click on these here. Kind of acts like a clip launch situation. some some vocals I'll go ahead and buy it I like both of these actually I was listening to these earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and add this here actually do it like that now in this situation we're going to mute those this year. Let's see what that sounds like again. Okay. So now we're going to grab maybe Oh, no, not again. Oh, only say it if you mean it. Only if 
Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so let's see if okay, the file tempo is ninety eight, so it did recognize detect the file tempo. Even the track is labeled with ninety eight BPM in there and this says C sharp minor. So okay, great. That works, but it didn't really necessarily quantize or rap or rap, right? warp that's that's what i'm trying to say warp and it could be because yeah stretch tempo files was not checked i should have did that but that's that's an option but anyway but because it didn't do that it's fine i can you know do what i need to so so right now uh Now, if it doesn't, let me let me undo that because I I'll get myself in trouble. If it doesn't warp automatically and you forget to hit that check button like you saw me do, or if or if your Studio One is not automatic like that, because you could turn it on and off, it remembers the last settings is what I'm getting at. You can always turn it on right here time stretch and so now it automatically time stretched once you turn it on so it's like it's cool <laughs> it's all good you know this, i can manually stretch it to where i where, where i want it to go so that's one two three four so i need to stretch it another four like right here I can put maybe the ROM. Yeah. And then this, in this situation, I'm going to say, I'll just drag it over to the sin and then it automatically create a sin bus channel. Right. Take an EQ.
Something like that, okay? What is this one doing? Let me see. Oh, I like that. Just pan it to the left. Yeah, I like it. Okay, there's something else I could do here. I can also turn change the the vibe. And then or add it a mix to it. I like that. something that's real cool studio one has this thing where you can so i kind of made edits right and sometimes you're doing these and you're not making edits according to the grid you're just cutting and you're trying to make some sense out of you know what you don't want to hear versus what you want to hear you know things like that I think I cut a little bit maybe, but it's cool because they got this thing in here called sync point. I'm going to activate it. And so with sync point, I can say, because it's not starting on one, I'm going to just activate it and put that at the 26, yeah, the 26 bar. So I'm noticing down here, that there's a option that opens up. So let me see, watch this. So if it's not checked, it's grayed out. But if you check it, here it is. So I'm going to just type 26 in here. Actually, I was hoping the whole thing will. Okay. All right. So let's see if it put it there. Yep. Sync point right there. And that's, there's an easy way to do this as well change your tool but for the sake of this video so i know that this i'm going to copy this to go to the intro section and i know the second bar is when we were needing it to start you know right that's perfect There we go. I'm gonna just pack these, I'll call these voiceovers. So, let me see. Let me add some more drums. Let 
You know what I'm saying? What I try to do is add a little variation. Probably can bring that down a little bit more. So maybe in the in the hook section. Maybe we can push this out to stereo two. Both of them in stereo two. We could treat this like it's a, a additional loop. I don't know if I lost anybody, but like process that the same, you know. Like just do something a little different to it. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. And maybe put a little bit in the sins. I'm thinking Something like that, you know? That's all I have for you guys. I'm Ella. B-Culture. Lifestyle governed by art. <laughs>